Okay, the TLDR of this video is if you're looking for a 3D printer for your school or for your classroom, I think you can now take your search seriously and take a good hard look at the Monoprice 3D Mini. I'll even do an embarrassing unboxing of this 3D printer and I'll give you the overview of how to set this up and why I think it's now time to take 3D printing seriously. Here it is. Monoprice 3D printer. I have been really skeptical of 3D printers since we've gotten them uh, here at school four years ago. It's kind of a love hate relationship, more hate than love. Uh, the thing is that I, uh, the reason I didn't like 3D printers in the past was I felt like their utility was relatively limited in the class. I felt like it was a kind of a kind of the smart board of the uh, 2010s, and uh, they were super expensive. They were really slow, and uh, they didn't they they weren't reliable. And so I just kind of gave up on them, and then. I saw on Instagram someone I trust a lot, Kevin Jarrett, follow him. He's, uh, he's an amazing educator who does a lot with coding, a lot with making, and uh, he posted a 3D printer that, on his Instagram feed, a 3D printer that he liked, and it was this one, the, the Monoprice uh, Version 2 Mini. Uh, you can get it on Amazon for uh, under $230. So I've been testing these for over six months now, and it is the first 3D printer I really like. I thought my favorite part about it was the price, and in some ways it is still the price. With a price like 230 bucks, you can purchase many of them, which helps alleviate the speed problem. So if you buy, you know, if you have a set of them in your makerspace, then you can allow kids work on multiple projects at the same time, and you don't have a ton of kids just waiting for a print job to finish, so the next kid can begin his or her print job. So if you have multiple, you just have multiple print jobs running at the same time. Um, and you can afford to do that because they're a lot less expensive than they, than they were. They're like a tenth of what they used to cost. So when you buy a few of those, you can have more kids work. And then if something goes wrong, there is a great Facebook community that Kevin uh, Jarrett shared with me and I'm now a member of. They're really active. And the cool thing about this Facebook community is, is that they are constantly modifying their, their 3D printers and fixing their 3D printers. So they're relatively easy to fix, apparently. The cool thing is I haven't had to find out how easy they are to fix because nothing is going wrong with the three that we own, which is why I wanted to buy a fourth. And uh, so here it is. Oh, the Monoprice 3D printer. All right, so there's the 3D printer. It comes, you know, kind of secure here. It gives you a little bit of filament. That's not enough to do almost anything. Uh, here's a little box with the... And here's the arm that holds the filament in place. And so you're just going to want to set that up. Now a couple things that you're going to need to know in order to set this up and you're going to learn from my mistakes. Uh, now I did follow the instructions and you do want to level this build plate. That's the first thing that you should do is level it. So you're gonna to wanna to go to the home screen. You definitely like, the, that's the number one thing is level this with using the Allen keys. You wanna make sure that it is a paper width away from the extruder, which is the tip of that, that part right there. Uh, once you have that leveled, you need to load the filament and power it up and then you need to transfer a file to it. Uh, I, I use with my students, use a lot of just Tinkercad and then export it in order to export that Tinkercad file to a file that this thing can read. You need to use the Cura software, some sort of slicing software. I use the Cura one, which is free and uh, has been working really well for me. And then I've just been transferring the file from the computer to the 3D printer using this little micro SD card. Uh, and so far that has, that has worked really well. Although I've read online that the, the micro SD slot in here 
eventually fails and they're one of ours is is it's a little harder to get in than it used to you kind of have to take a, a pair of tweezers to get it to stick in there. So I've also read about the possibility of hooking this up to a Raspberry Pi or ho hooking multiple of these up to a Raspberry Pi. And then you can also, using the Android app, you can send files to this wirelessly. This actually does have a built-in Wi-Fi network. Um, I've gotten that to work at home, but I haven't gotten that to work here because uh, we do have some peer-to-peer -peer networking turned off. I need to turn that turn that on to make this happen, but I haven't done it yet. Let's run a test. I've got it leveled. I've inserted the filament. Let's go to the print menu, and in the SD card should be a cat. There it is. Click OK. And here you can see that it is making sure that the nozzle, <laughs> they're now calling it the nozzle, not the extruder, and that the bed, not the platform, is heated up and so it should begin printing this cat any moment. So there you have it. I've become a convert for 3D printers in general. Uh, I've had uh, a lot of success with my students creating uh, meaningful academic projects using these 3D printers and that's what I'm going to share with you later in this series. So subscribe to the YouTube channel and come back and learn more about how to connect your computers to this, how to, to go through the workflow of designing using Tinkercad, slicing using Cura, and, and then actually printing using these 3D printers. But the next important question is what are you going to print? Uh, I think at some point you're going to get bored and you're going to re realize that if you're just printing keychains and, and little action figures that there's not much value to this. So I'm going to spend some time talking about going out into the community looking for uh, a real world application for the creative work that your students can do and along the way teaching them the problem solving.